Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. I encourage you to check out all my other podcasts, including the Old Time Radio Superman show at otrsuperman.com where you can find the podcast where I recorded every available Superman serial and half hour Superman radio episode and Superman had so many great first over radio here the introduction of Jimmy Olsen here Batman and Superman teaming up years before they would even do it in comics it's more than a thousand adventure filled episodes as Superman travels to lost planets and lost cities and fights evils close to home such as gangsters and even the Ku Klux Klan. You can listen to the series over at otrsuperman.com and you can check out all the other podcasts we do at greatdetectives.net. But now it's time for this week's episode of Mr. Chameleon. The original air date is September the 8th of 1948, and the title is Mr. Chameleon's Pet Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of Bayer Aspirin. Now let me tell you just who Mr. Chameleon is. Born of a well-to-do family and a college man, he tried from childhood to live up to the name he bore, Chameleon, by taking on the color of whatever situation in which he found himself finally entering the police force where he became known as Chameleon, the man of many faces, the underworld's most dreaded man. Throughout this series, the listener invariably knows who Mr. Chameleon is, no matter in which disguise he appears. But the criminal he's tracking sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon in Mr. Chameleon's Pet Murder Case. Our story opens in the criminal courts, during that solemn moment when sentence of death is about to be pronounced. The room is very still. All eyes are fastened on the thin, cruel face of Sorato, the gangster. For the notorious Sorato has at last met his Waterloo. Will the prisoner now rise? Have you anything to say before this court pronounces sentence on you? And I hereby sentence you to die in the electric chair during the week of... No! No, you won't do it! Silence! You'll never burn me! I'll never see the death house! I'll break jail! And when I do, I'll get Chameleon for his lying evidence that sent me here! So help me, I'll kill Chameleon! Silence! Silence! You hear me, Chameleon? I see you back there! I'm gonna get out! And when I do, I'm gonna kill you! Well, I'm a policewoman, Mr. Chameleon, but I never heard anything like the voice of that man Serato in the courtroom. He means to kill you. You're in dreadful danger. Oh, there are a lot of them in prison who've said they're going to kill me, Madeline. No, I feel very good. When you put an end to the career of a mad dog like Serato, well, it makes you pretty proud to be a cop. But suppose he did get out. Maybe that's just a woman's way of looking at it. Uh, let's go out to dinner tonight. And, um... Incidentally, I've always wanted to ask uh, why a beautiful girl like you ever got the idea of being a copper. My father was on the police force. 
He was killed by a hoodlum just like Serato. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Very few people know. But I adored my father. Madeline, uh, look, about dinner. Dinner? Would it uh, spoil your appetite to dine with me? Oh, <laughs> don't be silly, Mr. Chameleon. I'd love it. Good. That's a date. Um, are you going to come as Mr. Chameleon or in one of your impersonations? I just want to be sure I'd recognize you. <laughs> just Chameleon. I'll go home and dress and pick you up at 7.30. You and I are going to celebrate Serato's conviction. Hello? Chameleon? Oh, yes, Commissioner. Chameleon, the impossible has happened. Serato has escaped. What? Yes, someone smuggled a knife to him, and he stabbed the guard and made a break for it. He managed to get away. No. Now you stay at your apartment. I'm sending over a police guard. Don't set foot out of the door. No, listen, Commissioner, You I... know where that puts you, don't you? Right behind the eight ball. He and his whole gang are out to get you. I'm sending over two men. I don't need them, Commissioner. I'll take care of myself. Are you crazy? You heard Serato in court this afternoon. He threatened to kill you on sight. I heard him. But I'm coming right down to headquarters and no guard. This one is between Serato and me, and I think I'm quicker than he is. See you later, Commissioner. Ah, this should be interesting. Serato is hunting me, and I'm hunting him. Makes us even. Well, I'd better change. Better call Madeline, too. What the devil? Hello? Is this Mr. Chameleon? Yes. Is this Mr. Chameleon, the detective who goes around making like he's somebody else? What do you want? Who is this? Never mind who this is. I just thought you'd like to know we've got Madeline Evans. You don't need to look for her. You can't find her. Maybe nobody will ever find her. Unless you're willing to play ball. What do you want me to do? Take back the evidence you gave at Serato's trial. Say that you lied, that the whole thing was a frame-up. Give me 24 hours to think it over, Marty. Marty? You think I didn't know that voice? Marty the Moron, as Serato calls you. He never called me that. Tell him for me to take it easy with Madeline and give me a little time. I'll think it over. And tell Serato if he doesn't take it easy with Madeline that... Ask him how he'd like to digest a slug in the stomach. Chameleon, I'm telling you, your life isn't worth a nickel. Madeline Evans is in terrible danger. Not only is Serato himself after you, but you know as well as I do, his gang is organized. We're organized, Commissioner. Yes, but he has the advantage. You're out in the open. You can't see him, but he can see you. Now, if they could kidnap Madeline when she was on her way home... They won't try that with me. Not yet, Commissioner. Not as long as Serato thinks he can make a deal with me. Who is it? Tom Smith. Come in, Tom. Uh, Commissioner, you know Tom Smith, the Daily Chronicle? Oh, yes. I uh, told him to come over here. I have a favor to ask of him. Anything you say, Mr. Chameleon? Is there a story in it? Yes. Big one, eventually. Uh, right now, Tom, I wish you'd do me a favor. Yeah? Uh -huh. Write a story saying that there are rumors that new evidence has been unearthed in the Serato case. Say, is this on the level? You just write the story, Tom. You can quote me. I'm not sure that the evidence which convicted Serato was correct. I am working on new evidence, unquote. Hallelujah, this really will hit the headlines. What with Serato on the loose? Also, Commissioner, I'd like to have the boys bring in Jake Mallory for questioning. Mallory? You mean Serato's right-hand man? That's right. Commissioner? Okay, Chameleon. Tell the boys to pick up Mallory. That's another story for you, Tom. I have reason to believe that Jake Mallory is the man who really committed the murder for which Serato was convicted. Read all about it. New turn in Serato case. Rumors a new trial. Read all the... Paper, mister? No, thank you. I'll borrow my friends. Here. All about the Serato case. Read all about it. Well, how about it, uh, Detective Sergeant Arnold? Can I look at the headlines? Mr. Chameleon, what is this? You don't think Jake Mallory committed that murder, do you? That, my dear Dave, is a leading question. I refuse to answer. But we had to let Jake go this afternoon. We couldn't hold him. I expected you'd let him go. Dave, uh, you know Lily McCarty when you see her, don't you? Serato's girlfriend. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. She lives right in this block. But listen, Mr. Conway... I think you... I'll go and pay a call on her. And I'll go with you. No. No, Dave. 
Now, don't worry about me. Until Madeline is safe, I have to move in a certain way. I know exactly what I'm doing. You know, Mr. Chameleon, there's something about you that always gets me. What do you mean, Dan? The way you change. Ordinarily, you're an easygoing guy with a fancy education who's just as much at home on Park Avenue as at Central Headquarters. And then, like that, you're as hard and ruthless as a Serato. These gangsters are completely without mercy, Dave. They are enemies of society. They respect nothing and they trust no one. They trust no one. That is the thing that you must always remember. Hey, Mr. Chameleon, there she goes. Mm -hmm. Lily, Serato's girl. You going to question her? No. No, Dave, believe it or not, I'm going to invite the young lady to dinner. What do you mean you and me should have dinner tonight? You think I'd be seen having dinner with a copper? Why, Lily, I thought you might enjoy having an evening out. No, not with you, I wouldn't, Chameleon. I wouldn't go with you if you'd take me to the... the St. Regis. Funny you should happen to mention the St. Regis. That's what I was going with Madeline Evans. Where is she, Lily? I don't know where she is. I don't know where Serato is either, so help me. I'll meet you at the Montmartre restaurant at 8. I won't be there. Oh, yes, you will. I have enough on you to send you up for life. I know perfectly well that you were mixed up in the Rockman killing and the Millerstown holdup. I have got plenty of leads if I want to follow them up. Then why don't you, Chameleon? You meet me at dinner tonight or something very strange may happen to you. I got no business to be seen in a place like this with you, Chameleon. They'll think I'm leading you to Serato. I don't even know where he is. You know where Madeline Evans is. That sort of kidnapping is right up your alley, Lily. You've managed them before. I never even seen her. Well, in that case, we'll go for a little drive tomorrow. The country is so beautiful this time of year. No. No, I can't meet you again. I wouldn't dare. Do you mean that your pals don't trust you, Serato and Jake Mallory? Jake Mallory? Say, listen, he's fit to be tied. He thinks you and Serato have made a deal between you to railroad him to the chair in Serato's place. Dear me, what suspicious minds. Oh, why don't you lay off me, Mr. Chameleon? Leave me alone. Oh, I'm not hurting you. I'm simply giving you the pleasure of my company. Well, that's enough to make him kill me. You know, I might be more touched if I didn't know you for a thoroughly brutal murderess. The complete sadist. What's that? Something Serato called me? Marty Lewis went in one of his rages the other night because he says that Serato called him a moron. He says that's an insult, is it? A sadist is much worse. Come on, Lily, where's Madeline Evans? Or must you and I have another date tomorrow? I'm beginning to believe that the boys will get you if we do. There's a car behind us. I'm sure it's following us. Relax, relax, Lily, and enjoy the countryside. Oh, I shouldn't have come with you today. Now they'll be sure I'm talking. Tell me where they've taken Madeline Evans, and I'll turn the car around and take you right back to the city. Otherwise, you won't be able to get rid of me, Lily. Okay, okay. They got her in a little house over in Long Island City. I'll give you the address. And then let me go and don't come near me again, you dirty cop. <laughs> This is the place, Dave. You all set? Yeah, Mr. Chameleon. We've got men posted at either end of the street. These crooks won't get away. If they're still here. Open up in there. Open up. We have to break it down, Dave. Okay. Here it goes. <coughs> Madeline? Madeline? Here she is in here, Dave. Bound and gagged. Get, get this gag out of her mouth. Are you all right, Madeline? Um, yes, I'm, I'm all right, but... Thank heaven you got here. Where are they? They've gone. Less than an hour ago. Oh, am I glad to see you. They didn't hurt you? Not much, Dave. Who were the men? Anyone you recognized? Oh, no, just a couple of strong-armed boys. That's what I thought. The big boys kept clear. They were at the Serato, wherever he is. Mr. Chameleon, before they left, a car drove up and some men carried something into the other room and left it there. What? 
Was it? Yes, it sounded almost like a... something heavy. Dave. Yes? Come here. What is it? It's Lily. They killed her and dumped her body here. Mr. Chameleon. No, no, don't feel sorry for her, Madeline. She'd have done the same to you and enjoyed it. Well, that's one of them gone. Now, with you safe, Madeline, I don't have to consider anyone. What are you going to do, Mr. Chameleon? Serato and I can really have it out. Just the two of us. But it isn't just the two of you. He still has his gang. Minus one. Mr. Chameleon, what are you going to do now? Well, the usual. I have a pretty strong hunch that Serato is hiding out down near Chatham Square. I think I'll hang out there for a couple of days. But not out in the open. You mean you'll put on a disguise? Oh, yes, yes. That'd better be a good one. No, on the contrary, Dave. This time, my disguise is going to be so transparent that anyone, even Serato, will recognize me instantly. Mr. Chameleon will return in Mr. Chameleon's Pet Murder Case in just a moment. If you've never tried real Bayer aspirin, join the millions who use it for fast, reliable relief from ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain. Once you've experienced its amazingly fast yet gentle relief, you'll likely never again use anything except Bayer aspirin. You can actually see why Bayer aspirin gives such fast relief by doing this. Drop a Bayer aspirin tablet in a glass of water and watch what happens. You'll see it start to disintegrate within two seconds. What it does in that glass, it does in your stomach. And because of this amazing two-second disintegrating action, Bayer aspirin relieves pain with astonishing speed. So next time you have a headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain and want relief, really fast relief, remember that Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work almost instantly you take it. And also remember that Bayer aspirin has been used for years without ill effect by millions of normal people. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer aspirin, never by the name aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now we return to Mr. Chameleon and his pet murder case. It is the following morning, and in the office of the police commissioner, we find Mr. Chameleon dressed in the shabby clothes of a man from the tenement district. I thought I'd patrol that neighborhood... You know those tenements, Commissioner? They're like rabbit warrens. The only thing to do is to smoke Serato out. Chameleon, I still say you're out of your mind. Serato's gunning for you, and if you show up down there, I'm... Come in. Uh, Commissioner, have you seen Mr. Chameleon? Oh, there you are. You mean you recognized him that quickly? Well, of course I did. He needs a shave, and his clothes are strictly bowery, but he hasn't really changed. Uh, you hear that, Chameleon? Yes, I hear it, Commissioner, and it's just exactly what I want to hear. Give me a dime for a cup of coffee, mister. No. Oh, please, mister. I'm kind of down on my luck. Beat it. Did you hear me? Beat it. Hey. Who are you? Who, me? I know you. You're chameleon. What are you doing down here dressed like a bum? You can't fool me. I know you're chameleon. Well, good for you, Marty. So you're not a moron after all. And don't call me that. I'm as smart as anybody. Too smart to let anybody see me talking to you. What's the matter, Marty? Serato watching you from the window? Which one's he watching from? Get away from me. There's been too much talk that Serato's crowd is running out on him. If they see me with you, chameleon, they'll... Marty, don't you try anything. If I'm found dead, the police have orders to bring you in. Me? Why me? We've got plenty on you, Marty, so it's healthier for you if I stay alive. Okay, but keep away from me. Well, all I want to do is walk along a ways with you. I always enjoy talking to you. Mister, can you give me a dime for a cup of coffee? What? Do you uh, mind if I sit down at this table and join you? Chameleon. I told you to keep away. Everywhere I go, you turn up. Where's Serato? Hey, listen. Serato don't want nothing in this world except to kill you. You're nuts to go chasing after him. Marty, I have found that when anyone wants to kill you, it's better to show them your face than your back. Well, leave me out of it. And get out of here, will you, Chameleon? 
Not until I have had my coffee, Marty. Give me a dime for a cup of coffee, mister. Huh? Oh, no, not you again, chameleon. Yes, you leave me alone. Why, Marty, have you been drinking? Huh? You know Serato doesn't like that. They've been tailing me. They think I'm singing to you. Save your tears, Marty. When Rockman was murdered, he cried and pleaded too, and you just sat there and laughed. Where's Serato? I won't tell you, chameleon. Everybody's run out on him except me and Jake Mallory. But I ain't got a squeal. Not even a Serato is a dirty so-and-so. I told him not to his face. Mm, my, you're getting reckless, Marty. Well, good night. Pleasant dreams. Come in. Good morning, Commissioner. Oh, well, there's one thing I'll say, Chameleon. That disguise of yours gets better, or worse. They're beginning to look like a real Bowery bum. I'm beginning to feel like one, too, Commissioner. This keeps on much longer, but I... You know, I often think that the first requisite for a detective is patience, not courage. You'll need plenty of courage today. What do you mean? They got Marty last night. What? Yeah, his body was found on the waterfront riddled with bullets. You did your work well, Chameleon. Good. I've no pity for the martyrs of this world. They live by the gun and they die by the gun. Well, that leaves Sir Rotto. And Jake Mallory. That's two of them. Two against one is still an uneven match, Chameleon. Let me send Dave Arnold with you today. Nope. Uh, Sir Rotto must be frothing at the mouth by now. Yes, I'm counting on that. No, Commissioner, I've got to go after Serato alone, and I'm going to patrol that neighborhood until he can't stand it. Until he has to come out and get me. Look at him, Jake. The knife of the guy. <laughs> Who does he think he's fooling with that phony disguise? Nobody, Serato. Nobody? He thinks he's fooling me? No. Are you screwy? Of course he thinks he's fooling me. No. And stop saying no. Your yes men are gone, Serato. I took care of the last one last night, remember? Are you trying to tell me that Marty didn't have to go, the rotten little squealer? Well, anyway, he's gone, along with Lily. Now I'm going to speak my little piece, Serato. Oh, you are? Yes, I don't like what's going on. I don't like you blowing your top over Chameleon. If you're going to sense you, let him walk up and down out there till he drops. I'm going to kill that guy. I said I was going to kill him, and I never go back on what I say. Okay, but later, later, Serato. Hey, what's the matter with you, Jake? You giving him protection? Maybe you're making a deal with him, too. Well, that's a hot one coming from you, Serato. <laughs> Remember, they were after me. I was suspected of the murder that you were convicted for. I told you, Jake, I had nothing to do with but it. I ain't so sure. Maybe it was you who made a deal with Chameleon, and you're anxious to go out there because you know that he won't touch you. That's a lie. Oh, is it? So what are you going to do, Serato? Shoot him down while he's walking up and down the street? Why, the cops would be on our necks in a minute. We'd never get out of here. So you're the one that's yellow. I thought that was it. You know something else, Jake? I think you told him I was holed up here. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm getting out of here. I had enough. Oh, no, you're not. You're not going no place. Try and stop me. You think I won't? I don't take the double cross from anyone, Jake. Not from Marty or Lily or you. <laughs> Jake. Jake, you... You blasted fool. I... I didn't want to do that. Not to you. Now there's nobody. Nobody except... Chameleon out there. Except Chameleon. And I'm going down and get him right now. There he is. Chameleon. Thinks he's fooling everybody. Thinks he's fooling me. If I can only get him to come into this hallway, then he'll do it. Because he thinks I don't know him on account of his disguise. And once I get him in here where it's dark and quiet, I'll... 
Hey, you. You there. Did somebody call me? Yeah. Come in here a minute, will you? What for, mister? You want to make a buck? Do I? Just ask me. I have asked you. Sure I want to earn a buck. What do you want me to do? I wouldn't uh, kill nobody. Uh, not for a buck. Quite a comic, ain't you? <laughs> I, uh, I want you to run an errand. Take a message someplace. Is that worth a buck to you? Yeah, it sure is. Well, then, come on in here. Well, come on, why don't you? I don't know, mister. Uh, couldn't you give it to me out here? No, I couldn't. I gotta write the note out first. Oh, well, then go ahead and do it. I'll wait. Hey, don't you want your buck? Yeah, sure I do. I ain't eating 24 hours. Okay, come and get it. You can go and eat while I'm writing the note. You mean you trust me to come back? Sure. I trust you, and you'll trust me. I wish everybody was like that. You know, I can't see you in there. It's, uh, it's so dark. Where are you? Right here. Oh. Yeah, now I see you. Well, take a good look. It's the last thing you'll ever see, Chameleon, you dumb copper. Do you think you fooled me with that phony disguise? Uh, no, I didn't think I'd fooled you, Serato. You should have known that you couldn't play cat and mouse with me, that once I got a line on you, I'd shoot first. Uh, I'm dying, you... Shot me like a dog. Yes, you're dying, Serato. But before you do, I have a little message for you to take along with you. Your girlfriend, Lily, did not squeal on you. I forced her to talk to me in the same way with Marty. He was loyal to you, too. No. And no. Jake. Where's Jake Mallory? I, I killed him. I thought that would happen. Because that bird brain of yours, Serato, couldn't conceive of anyone being loyal. Not even your pals. You're a murderer, chameleon. Well, you can argue that out with St. Peter when he turns you away from the gates. I simply went on the principle, if I can't get all the crooks myself, I let them kill each other off. Are you busy, Mr. Chameleon? Oh, hello, Madeline. No, I was just looking over the records of these criminals that I murdered, according to Serato. Lily, petty larceny, grand larceny, murder. Marty Lewis, assault and battery, arson, murder. Jake Mallory, he really had brains, which made him the most corrupt of the lot. And as for the late Serato, well... Mr. Chameleon, you put yourself in such terrible danger. What sort of man are you to... To go into that alone? I didn't do it alone. They helped, every one of them. You know something, Madeline? I thought of your father. That helped, too. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, um, how about that dinner that was so rudely interrupted? Eight o'clock tonight at... Oh, wait a second. I want to call the commissioner. Hello? Commissioner Chameleon. Oh, yes? Uh, what is the fee of the public executioner gets up at Arsening? Maybe. What do you ask? I want to send him my check. You see, I'm afraid that um, I did him out of his money. Eight o'clock, Madeline. Eight o'clock at the St. Regis for dinner. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. The next time an ordinary headache threatens to spoil your day, get fast relief by taking genuine Bayer aspirin. You'll be amazed at how quickly Bayer Aspirin works, and the reason is that it starts to disintegrate within two seconds after you take it. To see for yourself that this is true, just drop a Bayer Aspirin tablet in a glass of water and watch what happens. Before it reaches the bottom of the glass, the tablet will begin to disintegrate. It does the same in your stomach, hence brings relief with astonishing speed. So the very next headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain you have, use Bayer Aspirin for really quick relief. And when you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not by the name Aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. 
Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of Murder and The Man Who Saw Too Much. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Balmer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert, music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. After years of work, a revolutionary new toothpaste has been developed called Lion's Toothpaste. By actual laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth, it gives teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands, brighter by far than any other toothpaste. New Lion's Toothpaste does this because it's a new kind of toothpaste with a formula that's completely new and radically different. A remarkable toothpaste that cleans without soap and polishes without chalk. Try it. Ask for Lion's Toothpaste. Mr. Chameleon, the new mystery drama, will be heard in another performance next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. You know, when I played Mr. Chameleon in 2013 and 2014, for those two weeks, I wondered how the heck did this stay on the air for five years? And uh, you kind of get a clue of it in this episode, because I think from the two episodes we played back then, you had the idea that Mr. Chameleon was a detective who donned disguises and did funny voices. But it's clear, at least in these early episodes, that they're trying to apply the idea that Mr. Chameleon can change and adapt in any way, become whoever he needs to be at the moment to get the job done. And in this case, he decided he needed to become utterly ruthless uh, and to really set the criminals against one another so that he could uh, be able to uh, provoke uh, the escapee into confronting him and then uh, be able to gun him down. Now, of course, I think it should be said or maybe goes without saying that the the way that this plays out is a really... uh, uh, ethically dodgy sort of plan because he essentially knowingly set in motion events that would lead to these people's deaths, but in a way that's not going to get him held criminally liable. But again, like I said, it's very ethically dodgy. That ability to adjust everything about yourself, not just voice or appearance and not just to don disguises, makes him a bit of a gray character. And I think that may also have made him more interesting to listeners of the era. I I think that, uh, obviously, the weak spot is that in a series like that, there's not really going to be any consideration of what are the consequences of living like a chameleon. Because the series just kind of treats it as like an interesting thing he does. But if you make radical shifts in what your uh, morality is and the type of person you are over time, uh, to the degree that he goes, that's got to have some uh, consequences. Uh, We just won't have that uh, explored in this series. We'll also say the silliest part of this episode was when his boss called and told him the impossible had happened and that a criminal had escaped. If it had happened, by definition, it's not impossible. And while prisoner escapes are not in commonplace, they are hardly in the realm of things that you would call impossible. So that was just a goofy choice of dialogue. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Ray, Patreon supporter since July 2020, currently supporting the show at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Ray. 
And uh, that will actually do it for today. I do want to remind you, if you are listening to this podcast over on YouTube, be sure to like the uh, video and subscribe to the channel. We'll bring you another episode of Mr. Chameleon next week, but join us back here tomorrow for The Man Called X, where... The time is 9.45 p.m. The place, a dark crooked alleyway near the dock area of Cairo. The furtive figure of a man moves cautiously hesitatingly through the black enveloping shadows of the Egyptian night. Oh. Oh. Why do I do these things anyway? A guy could get his throat cut out here, and for what? A few measly bucks. Believe me, if it wasn't for that, I'd never do it. Huh. Where is Uncle Ahmed anyways? He, he said he'd meet me here. Where is he? Where is cousin Ismail? Oh, where is anybody? Right behind hmm. the fender. Who? Oh. Oh, oh, Uncle Ahmed, it's so dark for a minute, I thought you were somebody else. Oh, you, you are somebody else. Quiet, Zilschmidt. Hmm? That is the blade of a knife you feel pressing against your throat. It, it is. Listen, there is a certain man aboard the British cruiser Hellenic out in the harbor. A certain Pasha Kent Thurston. He must board the Cairo port Saeed Express at midnight. Compartment C3. With him, he must have 100,000 pounds sterling. Repeat that. The Kairaport Said Express. Midnight. Compartment C3. 100,000 pounds sterling? You will see that he is there. With the money. Otherwise, your life will be forfeit. But, but what if he don't want to go? He will go, Zellschmidt. When you tell him that with a hundred thousand pounds he will be able to purchase a half penny stamp. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>